Hi, and welcome to Legends of the Wind. I'm Jerry Shank, and this is my wife, Alicia Choi. Hello. Thanks for coming today. And um, we want to welcome you to Legends of the Wind, where you get to find out what story you're in. We want to help you discover your identity and destiny through story. Our question today is, what price are you willing to pay to achieve your destiny? Now, um, we also want to talk about those of you who are fortunate enough and thank you for purchasing our book, Legends of the Wind, Volume 1. Uh, it's got 20 short stories. It's all kind of the same material that we present here on the podcast. And we write them for actual people, children, and adults. And not only that, uh, Alicia did the design of the illustration. This is from the Fire Bear. So welcome to the show. Um, we had some episodes previously back in February. And we were doing a promotion and we had free stories that we offered for people who I never met before, never interviewed. And uh, we had them on the show and I delivered their story to them and it was quite an experience. And so some of them were interested in buying an illustrated book cover that Alicia did. And uh, so I want to welcome Alicia to the show. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hi. Can you talk about your artwork? Well, well I'm an illustrator and... Um... I did um, mostly the uh, work for the animation when I graduated school, and after that, just do my own stuff. And I'm still developing my style, but um, it's more geared towards kind of children-like paintings. That's what I'm doing. That's awesome. In fact, some of the stuff that, uh, from our previous promotion, uh, Alicia did some design work for uh, those those people who ordered, and that was for Farther Away, and this is for Childhood. And I uh, don't know if you can see it, but there's a little girl sitting there with a teddy bear. And uh, so she's very talented, and I'm so blessed to know her and to have her partnering with me on this. Now, all of you who know about today's broadcast probably are wondering about Alicia's story. Now, of course, in this case, I've known her for a significant period of time, but when she had her birthday last Wednesday, I really wanted to give her a new story uh, to encourage her. And I did not know what that would be. So finally, about three nights ago, I got the download and the story, and I just heard the first sentence and got the image and, and let it flow. And so I had no pre-planning whatsoever about what this story would be. So, would you like to hear your birthday yeah, present? Yeah, sure. Okay. Cool. The title is A Diamond in the Rough. Alicia ran for her life as the huge red and green dragon chased after her flying through the air. This was a magical hunt, and it looked like Alicia was about to become a burnt victim from the fames, flames spewing from the dragon's mouth unless she escaped with no harm. However, Alicia wasn't afraid, even though she was very out of breath. She ran hard through the valley forest and took twists and turns, running in and out and between various trees and boulders. Her goal was to lead the dragon back to its cave. The beast flapped its wings and roared. They both arrived at the mouth of the cave that rested on the side of the vast mountain. Alicia turned around and grinned. The dragon landed its beautiful multicolored body and paced to the right, left and right. It roared again and sneered. The dragon spoke. You are my lunch today, little one. Why are you blocking my cave? Let's go inside for a meal. Alicia pulled out a small sword from her sheath and held it up towards the dragon's face. She said, you promised me a reward. I brought you many sheep and goats here for you to eat so that you would keep the land at peace. But now you have chosen to eat me instead. Let's make a deal. I will give you this, and you will stop harassing the land and spare me in all the villages. Alicia held up a golden chain that supported a small, rough, white diamond that hung down. The dragon squinted his beastly eyes and looked at it. That little treasure looks like nothing to me. Why should I keep it? The dragon sniffed the rock and snorted in distaste. Alicia replied, You do not know the potential of this diamond in the rough. You have no idea where it is going or what it will do. That is the mystery of what I carry. However, I know where it's going. I know its future. I will sacrifice this treasure to keep the peace of the land. 
As Alicia held up the diamond in the rough, she stepped backward with carefully placed footsteps. The dragon followed, not knowing they were moving toward the cave during the conversation. The dragon laughed. <laughs> Is that your destiny? Is that what you offer me? You would give it up for my pleasure? The dragon roared again in delight. You fool. By now, Alicia reached the entrance to the large cave, and the dragon's shadow covered her. The beast spoke again. You do not know what you carry. Fine. I will take your treasure and leave you in the land alone. Alicia said, Do we have an honest deal? She then stepped further into the cave. Surrounding her were countless bones and skulls of previous victims of the dragon. Alicia stumbled as the dragon trapped her. Her back was about to reach the wall. The dragon smiled and raised its head up. He said it's a deal. Alicia then took the gold chain with the diamond in the rough, hanging in from it, and set it on a large stone in front of her. Here, mighty dragon, I surrender it to you. The dragon's face showed pride and glee. He stooped down with his spiked armor-plated head and opened his mouth. He then inhaled as if he was about to blow fire from his mouth. Instead, he blew hard and his breath knocked Alicia backward. Then, with his pointed teeth, he bit and lifted the gold chain. He swallowed the treasure in one quick gulp. Alicia was now on the ground, and she scrambled, trying to get onto her feet. The dragon spoke, You little fool, you thought I would honor the deal. Now I have your treasure in my belly, and your tiny body is about to be next. Alicia stood up and held out her sword. That's what you think, mighty dragon. My sacrifices are made of light. They will return to me in multiple ways. Alicia's sword shone in bright light in the dark dragon's dark cave. Next, Alicia's hair and body glowed in a beautiful blue and purple light. The dragon feared the immense luminosaurus and cried out, What have you done? The dragon's body then rumbled and shook. He cried out in pain. Smoke and flames from inside his belly poured out. He lost his balance and grabbed his stomach in agony. The dragon inhaled a large breath and was about to shoot flames into his cave. Alicia ran, jumped up, and then dove in between the dragon's legs and slid out onto the other side into the sunlight. The dragon turned around and screamed in agony. Beams of light pierced through the dragon's belly. Smoke and flames spewed out of the dragon's mouth, e eyes, and ears. The treasure on the inside of him destroyed the dragon. The dragon jumped up in a full rage, and he aimed his snout toward Alicia. He burst into flames. He roared and cried as his body burned. The furious flames caused the dragon to crash back and forth, knocking down the rocks that supported the entrance of the cave. Soon, the shaking caused an avalanche of rock and debris to fall down, and it covered the dragon and his cave. Alicia had won. Alicia's glowing light and sword dimmed down. It was quiet and still. She could hear the wind blowing and the trees shaking their leaves. The birds chirped, and life seemed to brighten in the surrounding forest. Alicia took a deep breath and sat on a log. She replaced her sword in her sheath and rested. As she absorbed the scene and noted what just happened, she said a little prayer. Thank you, heaven, for giving me my diamond. I did what you asked of me, but now I do not know what to do. The rock slide that buried the dragon's cave had many stones of different sizes and dirt covering it. The smoldering body was deep inside forever, but some of the dirt and small stones moved and crumbled. Something inside was trying to dig its way out. Alicia stood up in an instant, and she pulled out her sword again in a flash. She looked closer and saw three small animals piercing their way through the dirt and debris. They were mice. These little mice popped their heads out, and together they worked and pulled out the golden chain and the diamond in the rough. Alicia couldn't believe her eyes. The three little mice dragged the treasure and ran up to Alicia. Alicia looked at them and saw that they were blind. It was indeed the three blind mice. They presented the treasure to her and said, We three blind mice gave up our precious sight, so that others may find their heart's delight, to see their destinies return to them, not because of might or fright or blight, but because of true sacrifice. 
You did this without complaining, so heaven's return is now your gaining. Please receive your treasure and find joy again. Alicia lifted the golden chain with the diamond and saw that it was no longer rough in shape, but in fact a very crystal clear and cut with many beautiful facets on it. The diamond was pure and well. Alicia's eyes grew bright with joy and she placed the treasure on her neck. They returned it to her for she was the true owner. She then stooped down and kissed each of the mice on their little heads and said, Thank you, my dear little three blind mice. I'm honored to know you. And with that kind gesture, the mice scampered away into the forest. Alicia looked down at her chest and saw the sparkling diamond shine on her. She smiled and took a deep breath and said, Now, on to the next adventure. With that, Alicia ran off and disappeared into the woods. What will she accomplish next? Inceptio. Okay. Go ahead. So tell me. Um, Give me some feedback. What's a nice story. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but I want to ask you first, because you kept telling me this is irrelevant, so what, why? Well, that's what I want to see what you would think. No, I want to hear from you first. Well, um, you know, we've been struggling a lot in, in our path, mm -hmm. and um, we're in Wyoming at this time. Yeah. Do you want to be here? <laughs> no. No. And so I would say... Um, you sacrificed for being here mm. and that's not the only thing that you sacrificed but i didn't go into this story with any intention of writing anything no agenda none whatsoever so when i saw the story it made me think of the many things that you've given up and how you paid that price so I don't want to do any more interpretation of your story, but I think the, the viewers would like to see what you want to say. What response would you have beyond that? Uh, well, I mean, um, well, the sacrifice is, I don't know, I actually, well, I mean, there's a things I actually did it by myself or I had to do it anyway because I had no choice. Um, so, but, um, well, I mean, all the, the things I don't really remember much right now, but, um, the, when you read a story, the one thing I was thinking, mm -hmm. cause I had so many dreams, I have so many things to do and I have so many interests that's always, you know, bugging me because mm -hmm. I want to go to like one, one direction like other people do, but, um, I'm doing many things at the same time. It's not fun. I mean, it is fun, but it's not fun in terms of sometimes what's my main main thing, you know, what's my main career then uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I do this and that and that. So, um, there was also, I mean, it was not I mean, it wasn't set, I'm not satisfied in that sense. And recently I finally found, I think but uh the thing i i think i found and um so the the diamond was rough in the beginning but mm -hmm. it's shiny and then and cut yeah cut and then taking a next adventure mm -hmm. i believe that's what they're talking about in the story mm -hmm. yes yeah mm -hmm. and so, so mm -hmm. what kind of hope or encouragement does it give you oh um, well i mean i'm already excited what i'm going to do next and um, I actually was watching some YouTube videos today and gave me another idea. So I have to juggle with between two again, but um, it's a, it, it will be related anyway. So I'm not really, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it right now. And um, I actually like to do that, that way because it's, it's, uh, it's all going to help my creativity and art creation and all that it's gonna help help me so um um what's the question? how does the story give you hope and encouragement oh yeah so um well i'm excited 
and this story confirms that and then give me also a permission that I can be excited and I'm taking another adventure. Cool. Yeah. Now we had our question for the audience today and that is what price are you willing to pay to achieve your destiny? So what do you think your story has to do with that question about the price? Price? Yeah. Well, I always believe if you really want, you're going to sacrifice anything to achieve that. So what price? Any price. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, without going into a lot of detail, mm -hmm. but can you talk about the pain that you experienced about the sacrifice sacrifices that you've made well well i mean my life is not fulfilling in many ways because of those sacrifices it's not going the way i want it um so well basically i'm not happy and but i have to keep, keep giving me the positive uh words to me so i'm not really going down and down and in the and then i have to find a way to enjoy my life in the midst of all those. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. So thank you, Alicia, for all that feedback. That's really good, and I'm glad to hear it. Um, you know, it makes me think about the audience, too. Um, you know, you have a, a calling. You have a destiny. You have a purpose. And um, things may not go your way for a major few set of seasons. And I think it's important to not let go of that dream in your heart. I can tell you for me, my dream has died and been crushed multiple times, but I'm looking forward to my future anyway. And uh, I'm really thankful that you are with me in this journey because I could not do it without you. And she's a much smarter and wiser person than me just because I write these stories and have these downloads with no planning whatsoever, I can't do everything and I can't think of everything. And so she's very wise and just really gifted in many areas. I am not. And so when it comes to my death of my dream or the death of my destiny, um, there is a rebirthing. And uh, I think that this story talks about that, that, you know, we fight a dragon in our life and uh, we uh, seem to give up what we have been promised even though it's undeveloped, underformed and in the end we get it back in an undiscovered, an unknown way and it's ready for us. So um, Alicia, um, what can you tell about the, to the audience about uh, them ordering a story for themselves? What can you share with them? Getting their own story for me. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, um, this Legends of Wind started uh, back in the days it's as a birthday gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I was thinking that was very nice that you can get some kind of story. I mean, you can become a, a hero in mm -hmm. your own story. And everybody is a main character. Mm -hmm. So this is a perfect that you actually become not the, you know, the story that you can order, but it's a mass produce. So you just change the name and, you know, produce a book. This is a, something very unique and it's just for you. Um, so if you want some specific the story for you, I encourage you to order this. This is really nice. I mean, I... Uh, so this is, I don't know, like my sixth one or yeah. seventh one She's, or something. This is her sixth or seventh. <laughs> so it's my, been going on a long time yeah, for 10 so, years. So, so my <laughs> response is not like, like, whoa, right now, because I already got so many. But it's still very uh, valuable because every single stories are different. But uh, when I first time, I when I got it, I, I remember I was crying. It was really well, like it was an amazing moment. Tell the audience how long it's been since you had another story, and what's the time from this one to the previous one? I don't know. I don't even remember. Probably five or seven, ten, oh, seven yeah, years. Yeah, more than Kylie's age. So yeah. it's um I probably don't know, like it's ten many, years. Many, many so years she, ago. she hasn't gotten a story for like ten years. Yeah. Um, so if you want to order one for yourself, where you have a personal revelatory uh, story. 
go to legendsofthewind.com and go to the store. You can also see your other uh, shows there as well. And um, Alicia can also design an illustrated cover for you. And we have the, the story in here and a bunch of other information as well. And uh, she can do that. This is a hardback or a softback. And um, yeah, so um, we want to encourage you that this is something really special. And this is something really unique. And we don't know anyone else is doing things like this. And so we encourage you to find, a, find out what story you're in. Find out your identity and destiny. Uh, and check out the previous episodes, especially the ones that say Become a Legend, where you can see others uh, for the first time receiving their stories. And I meet them for the first time as well. Remember, I never interview or research anybody prior ahead of time. So thank you so much for watching. Now, we do have another announcement. Today is Monday, and we started at 7 p.m. Pacific. We're going to be now going weekly. I have been stumbling and fumbling for the past six months on this podcast, and I think I've got some sort of rhythm, going to uh, plan to have this show be done weekly. So every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Mountain, uh, we'll be here. And we have uh, so far enough stories to last one year's worth. Now, if you want to uh, become a legend yourself, we can add more content to that uh, information to the show, and you get to meet me and be on the show as well. So thanks for uh, watching us tonight. If you want to email us, please uh, find us at support at legendsofthewind.com. And uh, remember to please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell button as we continue growing this show. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. Alicia, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Happy birthday yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, <laughs> we appreciate all of you out there watching with us. Oh, I also saw that Lisa uh, Blakesley is still there. Lisa, are you still there? I saw you make a comment. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe she bumped off. But thank you so much. And you guys have a wonderful night. Thank you.